It starts as a stray hair on your pillow, but soon the reflection in the mirror feels unfamiliar. Panic, anxiety, we've all felt it, the fear of going bald. Okay, breathe. Today, we're gonna explain the hair growth cycle and the three phases that it goes through. First and foremost, we have the antigen phase. That's the long growth cycle. It's where the follicle gets most of its nutrients. The second one is the short transitional or the catagen phase. This is where it starts to push through the scalp a little bit and you can start to see the beginning of the top. And the final phase is the telogen phase. That's where the resting part is, where it usually sits on your head for five or six weeks before you get a haircut or it falls out. But what happens when one of these cycles gets disrupted? Because that's truly where hair loss starts. A reference shows that a recent Harvard study on chronic stress actually prolongs that third telogen phase by suppressing the follicle stem cells. But what are some other causes of hair loss? Genetics and hormones, for example, as androgenetic alopecia arise both in men and women, which is basically a genetic predisposition that affects DHT on scalp follicles. Stress response or prolonged stress may trigger an integrated response inhibiting follicle growth as well. And there are emerging insights that show innovative studies of promise that a sugar known as deoxyribose has positive effects for promoting hair growth by enhancing blood vessel formation around the follicles and acts very similar to monoxidil. The two methods that we're going to go over for regrowing your hair, and that's going to be microneedling number one, and second is going to be scalp massage. Now, first we're going to start off with microneedling. Microneedling or derma rolling is basically where small needles, which can be anywhere from 0.05 millimeters to about 1.5 millimeters, are used to make little cuts and incisions on the surface of the skin. And the reason this is done is to promote collagen production in the skin and try to stimulate hair growth. This is most commonly used with beard growth, but can also be used to bring back hairlines. And in certain cases on a medical grade, can even be used to bring back hair in different areas, such as the scalp, crown, back of the neck, etc. The second method is known as scalp massage. Now, there's multiple different ways to do scalp massage, but of course, the reason behind why it's important is the same. You want to, again, stimulate blood flow to the follicle so that way that antigen phase can be as productive as possible, right? So by using massage, you're able to, again, move that blood flow to those follicles. And this can be done, as you can see here, just by using your hands and doing a quick couple of circles in multiple directions across the entire head. Or there's head gear you can use that massages your scalp for you and you can walk around, have that on, wear it for 10, 15 minutes a day and have absolutely no problem. So it really does depend on how it is that you feel comfortable doing scalp massage, but of course, either way works as long as, again, you're getting that blood flow to the follicle intended. And then last but not least, you want to make sure that the shampoos and the products that you put in your hair are not astringent, not pulling out those oils, taking out that nutrient. But the number one way to prevent the loss entirely is diet. So that means make sure that you're getting your vegetables in. Okay, make sure that you're getting your complex carbohydrates. Make sure that you're getting your proteins in. You want to have a well-balanced diet looking at that pyramid, the food pyramid. You want to make sure that you're getting all of those healthy nutrients and foods into your body so that way you have all the vitamins, the proteins, and the minerals that you need. And that starts in the kitchen, right? So make sure we're cutting out that fast food. We're cutting out that junk food. We're cutting out those processed sugars. So that way we can have food that's healthy for our body. It looks good. It tastes good. And ultimately, it makes our body feel better and allow it to do the processes that God intended for it to go through. 